I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's News Update. The IDF confirmed Wednesday that a Syrian mortar shell landed in Israeli territory, an apparent spillover from the internal Syrian conflict. No damage or injuries were reported. The mortar landed near an IDF base on the Israel-Syria border in the Golan Heights, and the IDF registered a complaint to the United Nations. This is not the first incident of its kind. Several stray shells and bullets from the Syrian conflict have landed on the Israeli side of the border in recent weeks, and Israeli troops have fired artillery shells in, into Syria in response. Meanwhile, Reuters reports that the U.N. peacekeeping chief said that U.N. forces based in Syria to monitor the longtime ceasefire between Syria and Israel are bringing in more armor to reinforce security there. Peacekeeping Chief Hervé Latsou said there was growing concern over the threat of Syrian rebels coming into the area after an incident Friday when two Austrian soldiers serving in the peacekeeping force were shot on their way to Damascus airport. The two were taken to hospitals in Israel and are both expected to recover. About 800 of the peacekeepers patrol on the Syrian side of the 1973 Golan Heights ceasefire line the U.N. force deployed to the area after the Yom Kippur War. The JTA reports that an amendment that would have penalized the Palestinians for seeking non-member state status at the U.N. was not included in a defense bill that was passed by the U.S. Senate. The National Defense Authorization Act, which passed late Tuesday, did not include the amendment which was introduced last week by Democratic New York Senator Chuck Schumer and Republican South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. The amendment would have cut funding to the Palestinians if they were to seek charges against Israel at the International Criminal Court after their U.N. status upgrade. The amendment had also called for the shutting down of the PLO office in Washington until the Palestinians returned to the negotiating table with Israel. Several Jewish groups have expressed outrage over recent comments made by Ecuador's President Rafael Correa. Correa made remarks while visiting Argentina on Tuesday comparing the terror attack on a Jewish center in Buenos Aires in 1994 to NATO's bombing of Libya. Hezbollah and Iran are believed to have been behind the Jewish center terror attack which killed 85 people. When asked about Iran and its suspected participation in the attack, Correa stated, I am familiar with the case, which is a very painful part of Argentina's history, but look at how many died in the NATO bombings of Libya. If we compare these two events, we can see where the true danger lies. American Jewish Committee Executive Director David Harris said to compare a terror attack to a military campaign to assist Libyans seeking to overthrow a tyrannical despot is outrageous. The Simon Wiesenthal Center said Correa's contempt for the victims of Iranian-sponsored terrorism speaks for itself. Wiesenthal Director for South America Sergio Witter said if Correa is a true friend of Argentina, he should employ his intimacy with Tehran to demand that the Iranian suspects be brought to justice with no further delay instead of justifying terror. The Associated Press reports that a man arrested last year for plotting to blow up synagogues in New York City has pled guilty to terror and hate crime charges. 27-year-old Ahmed Farani, who is originally from Algeria, was one of two men arrested in May of 2011 as part of a weapons-buying sting. Police said Farani bought three handguns, ammunition and an inert grenade from an undercover detective. In a prepared statement, Farani said on Tuesday, by targeting a synagogue, I intended to create chaos and send a message of intimidation and coercion to the Jewish population of New York City, warning them to stop mistreating Muslims. Manhattan State Supreme Court Justice Michael Obis said he planned to sentence Farani to 10 years in prison, after which he would likely face deportation. Sentencing was scheduled for January the 30th. And finally today, two Jewish nonprofits announced their merger earlier this week in an effort to reach a broader audience. The Isabella Friedman Jewish Retreat Center, which is part of the UJA Federation of New York, and Chazon, which works to create healthier and more sustainable Jewish communities, have been talking about merging since the beginning of the year. Both groups are known for providing transformative experiences and for playing a leading role 
in the Jewish environmental movement and the Jewish food movement, which among other things fights hunger and works to ensure equal access to fresh food. Board chairs Richard Dale of Chazon and Mark Russo of Isabella Friedman said of the groups who will each keep their names that the hope was for the combined entity to grow stronger and expand its programming, creating a greater human and communal impact together than either could do alone. And that's Shalom TV's news update. I'm Tisha Bader.